What is up, everybody? Back again for week eight. Eight. Episode eight. Yep. Um, what the fuck happened this week? This week was wild, dude. I mean, holy shit! I went. I went through our picks. I'm gonna get this out of the way first. Yeah, go ahead. Um, our worst week for picks. Oh, I'm sure. By far. Yeah. Oh, by yeah. far so you were six out of 13 so you were almost 500 i was five out of 13 damn His trey was two trey got two, <laughs> <only> two? <laughs> no way bro i was literally uh the jags and who else did he pick um the jags and cleveland Yo, I can't hear you. You can't hear me? No. Let me make sure my audio is right. What, did it just cut out on you or something? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the only thing he got right was Jacksonville and Cleveland. That's rough. <laughs> that, that's yeah, rough. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. All right. So, poor Trey, but it is what it is. But, fuck him. I'm not trying to be the loser, so... <laughs> Hey, you're you're only down two picks. Overall? Overall. Yeah. Well, we're doing it by percentage since Trey's gonna send them to us weekly, right? Well, yeah, he's well, I guess we'll go percentage from the end of the season. But All like right. he was he was beating the fuck out of us last week because his percentage <laughs> he was he was like eleven out of thirteen or fourteen. Yeah. All right, well, let's get into this. Uh um, it was a bit ridiculous how many upsets we had this week. Oh yeah, Patriots over oh, Bills. Sure. Whoever would have thought that Dude, after the, the, after the, the fucking... Patriots have been having? I mean, whoever would have thought that the Bills and... fucking cost me like twenty dollars. Yeah, well, really, it was five. But I so I I picked a parlay for that game that one hundred percent should have hit. Right, like one hundred. I picked the Bills to score first, the Bills to score over twenty points, and the Bills to win. Okay, but I mean, once one's dead, they're all dead. So mm -hmm. they, didn't they scored over twenty. Get in there. Oh, dude, dude, the Nuggets are going back to back. The Nuggets are going back to back. That's all I'm gonna say. They're going. Oh, back. did the game start already? Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to has trying somebody to... has somebody hit a three already? Yes. Who? Who hit the first one? Yeah. I think it was Torian Prince for the Lakers. Fuck. <laughs> I bet a dollar that Jokic was going to be the first one to hit it. No. And it would have paid out shoot. like it would have paid out like thirty dollars. Yeah, he doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but uh, yeah. Um. Anyways, back to football. Uh. Bills just they they look like they're slumping right now, man. They look they look rough. Um, Josh Allen. It it's hard to overcome a first drive interception. Like the first throw of the game for you is a pick. That I mean that's that's a rough start. It's never it was fun. Anthony Davis, by the way. Oh, um, never fun, never good. Um, I don't know. I. How many interceptions did Josh I Allen throw? I don't think the Bills are going to do anything this year. I just, I, uh, it's it's a constant, it feels like a constant decline, right? Because it was the AFC Championship game. And then it was that divisional game against the Chiefs in overtime that everyone thought if whoever won that game was going to win the Super Bowl. I mean, obviously, no one saw the Bengals coming. But I th I think it's true. I think if if the Bills had beaten the Chiefs, I don't think that year the Bengals would have beat them, and I think the Bills would have beat the Rams. And then last year, it's getting walloped by the Bengals in the divisional round at home. So I just I don't I don't know where they go from here. Yeah, they're in a they occupy a weird space in the NFL. Uh, like a, like can't a, tank, but can't win the Super Bowl. Right, like. They're they're too good not to make the playoffs, but they're just lacking certain things to really go the distance. But at the same time, the Bills on a good day are going to beat every team in the NFL. 
the which Bills is what basically 50 on Miami. So right, which is it's just fucking weird. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. The the Patriots are still dead. Don't let that fool you. They're not doing anything. That was just a divisional game that they ended up winning. I mean, I I think that's just what makes the NFL the NFL is you really never know what the fuck is going to happen. Like you can make your best guess as many times as you want, but I mean, obviously we're not the most analytical and no <laughs> smart people when it comes to football, but no. a bad week we're getting almost fifty percent of our picks right. Yeah, and. I thought I put a parlay on just straight up money line bets, and I thought it was going to hit. Mm-hmm. And so you're you're wrong. starting you're starting the sports bet too. Nah, uh, I don't know. I'm creeping into it because I don't. Uh, that's to... what I did because you know how DraftKings is that five dollars and you get the yeah. bonus bets. I'm yeah. still roll running off of that. Yeah. So, so I've only put five dollars in my own money, and I've made. The only big bet I hit is when the Jags played last week. Yeah. On, or on Thursday. I bet that their first drive was going to be a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And I did a one of the $25 bonus bets and I made 100 bucks off of it. Nice. Again, I I don't know. The the NFL, the parody right now in the NFL is just... Hold on. I'm fucking cold. I need a jacket. Well, this is awkward. It's just me here alone. But uh hey guys. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. Uh I don't really know what to say. This is weird. It's like me and my own thoughts. I'm just ecstatic right now. Just watch the nuggets, the ring ceremony, watch the banner go up. It's an emotional experience. It really is. But we'll I'm talk too about glad it later. To turn the heat on. Um, as you can see, Charlie's squeezing into the jacket there. It literally our electric bill. Yeah. For the first month that we've been here. Yeah. Less than fifty dollars. There you go. Keep it up. And then our our water yeah. bill was like. Blankets. Our water bill was like ten bucks. Yeah. Four minute showers. You don't need the heat. You got blankets. But no, I, mean, I, I, I sleep with the window open most nights. Yeah, I don't know if I can do all that. But um, yeah, that's that's fucking insane. But seriously, uh, the the parody in the league right now is crazy. I mean, there's no one team that you look at and are like, they're the best. No, it, you're right. Like, it's, it's fucking insane. I mean, we weren't on the Jags. I mean, you were on the Jags dick at the beginning of the season. They fizzled out, and now they're fucking doing amazing, and they barely beat the Saints. I mean, the Saints were coming back. Yeah, and then you had that drop touchdown in the end zone with, like, 30 seconds left. Yeah. Well, it was, I think, was it Fabian Moreau? No, not Foster Monroe. Foster. Monroe. Yeah. Which, hey, that's a hell of a story, dude. Yeah, I don't know if you know about him at all, anything about him, but uh, he... uh when he was doing his physical to sign with the saints, they figured out that he had cancer. Huh? Yeah. So the saints doctors figured out that he had cancer through his physical. He was out all last year treating cancer and he came back, he beat it. And now he's back playing in the NFL. I mean, that's amazing. But, but you got to catch fuck that. Ball. The, yeah. That, <laughs> you got to catch that ball, dude. I, uh, yeah, that's, I saw him on the sidelines like that. Poor fucking dude. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean the Bears put up 30 on the Raiders, I guess, really isn't that good. Um, no, 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 no. Do you even know their starting quarterback's name? Oh, fuck. I, I know that he played, it was like fucking FCS or D2. Shepard University. The only reason I know where or what that school is, is do you remember when my house was getting built in Leonard's Grant and I had to stay with the Van Oss family? Um... Alex and Shaquan, they were seniors my freshman year. No, I didn't. I wasn't friends with you yet. Um, but either way, Shaquan was uh, Shaquan played football at Shepherd. Did he play with that guy? Maybe I don't know. God. I doubt it. But I mean, gotta give it to the Bears. Yeah, they won. But 
They still good, suck. The Raiders suck. Game. I don't really give a fuck about that game. Yeah, who really cares? Um, the Browns Colts. That was a hell of a uh, game. The refs cost the Browns the game or the Colts the game maybe. Uh the the Gardner Minshew though. Solid quarterback. Yes, for sure. He he's, is, a, he's a serviceable backup that can he can win you a couple of games. Right. I would I would have liked to have seen the Colts win that, but you know you can't argue with a one point game. That's no. damn near an eighty point game. Like that's unreal. Ooh. Um, Miles Garrett is a monster, dude. I mean, he did you see the play where he jumped over the Colts O line? Like he jumped. From a three-point stance, it jumped over their field goal line and blocked the kick. Like, high jumped it. I did not, but we are going to look this up. Dude, he jumped over a human being and blocked the field goal. Which, at the end of the game, if he hadn't have done that, maybe the Browns lose. That's right. Let, let's live react. My fucking Wi-Fi is locked. Field goal. But yeah, that game was crazy. Just up and down the field. Um I don't know if Deshaun Watson wants to play football anymore. He doesn't. He never should have been allowed to play in the first place. I think Holy shit. Yeah. Did, yeah. Did... Yeah. He is too goddamn big to be doing shit like that. Yes. He's a giant fuck. And he's doing shit like that. Yeah, and then the camera just pans to Deshaun Watson. Dude, I'm telling you, he he doesn't want to play the game. He doesn't he need just, to. He caught that fucking bag. That's He doesn't need he doesn't want to play. It's very obvious he doesn't want to play. It, the tier doctor I mean, hey, again, I mean, I don't know what the dude's feeling, right? But the team doctors cleared him. He went out there, he threw a pick, and then he came and sat down. And the Browns, dude, they're good. They're good. Yeah, honestly, if they had a quarterback that at least tried. If they had Gardner Minshew. Woo! I, I love Gardner Minshew. Uh, let's let's stop beating around the bush here, Charlie. What the fuck are your commanders doing, bro? bro? Dude, we're, I'm fucking over it. I mean, what are they doing? Our, our team is bad. Our coaches are bad. You're going to get Sam Howe killed. He is going to die. He is. How many He's sacks did we let? I, I turned it off after the first half. I was like, I, I'm not watching this anymore. Through seven weeks, he's been sacked 40 times. 4-0. Yeah, he's 40. on pace to completely shatter the record that Matt... Uh, was it Matt Schaub? I think it was David Carr. David was... Carr, yeah. Texans quarterback. But, um, I mean, dude... He's going to get hurt. Our offensive line is terrible. Our, all of our coaches are terrible. Your defense played well. I mean, it was They the did. Our, our defense is, I mean, yeah, it is the Giants, but our defense has been doing a little bit better the past couple of games. And I know you said you didn't watch a lot of the second half, but you had a chance in the goal line. Sam Howell made a hell of a play to get out of a sack, and he hit Jahad Dotson. It was a little bit behind him. It was like right, he's running this way, and it was like right here. He dropped but it, I'm guessing. down on the one-yard line, and he dropped it. That's the second drop touchdown in three weeks. It, will, it might not have been a touchdown, but at least would have been a first down. Right. Um, and that would have tied the game. Yeah, I, I have to be honest. I I don't – What what's the expression? I'm not wearing the rose-tinted glasses or something. Yeah. Yeah, you're not, you're not seeing the world through rose-colored glasses or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can this see team is this team is just fucking bad. Like we have solid talent, but the way our Jack Del Rio's stupid. I mean, you ever notice how it seems like every team has just the play every time to beat us? Yeah. Where if our interior four doesn't stop them before it happens, it's like almost always a first down. Yeah. It's because he's predictable. He doesn't change his scheme up at all, and he needs to go. When Juan Rivera does. needs to fucking go. And honestly, I don't know how I feel about Eric Bieniemy. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I mean, again, it's only been seven weeks. 
You guys are three and four, which as an objective NFL fan, three and four, not terrible. Could be better. Not terrible. Right. I mean, there's still plenty of time to, you know, make a run, but with our schedule. Yeah, no. No. We still have to play us twice. You have to play the Eagles again. Yeah. I mean, we play the Eagles this week. You have to play the Niners at some point. Yeah. Um. At this point, it's tank for the rest of the season. So I, I'm going to say this about Eric being me now. We've seen what can happen when he is playing this team to its advantage, and it's damn near beating the Eagles. Yeah. How is it that we can go from the perfect scheme for us playing against a team like the Eagles to scoring seven points against the fucking Giants? Okay. Make it make that, sense. But I feel like that's been the league, just the league this year. The 49... Okay, look. Cowboys had a bye. I don't want to make a lot of the conversation about the Cowboys, right? The Cowboys are not a bad team. They're a very good team. They're probably a top four team in the NFC, right? We agree on that. Uh, Maybe I'd give you I'd give you top three in the NFC. Right. Well then yeah, we agree. So the the Niners beat us by 32 and then lost to Cleveland. And you're like, oh, Cleveland, their their defense is good. You mean kind of. They gave up 39 eight to the Colts. But anyways, you're like, okay, it's a it's a slip up. Then they lose to the Vikings. They lost two in a row to two subpar teams compared to their talent. I mean, it's just the league, dude. The Eagles lost to the Jets last week. I mean, week to week, it's just you don't know what you're going to get. You really don't. So, Yeah, but at a certain point, like... Get that shit out of here, LeBron. You fucking suck. Like when... I mean, you just can't get anything going on offense. Why are you still trying the same shit? Like, why are why are you dropping Sam Howell back every play did to try B to make Rob, a lot? Did B Rob play this week? Where was he? Did dude? I mean, he's like non-existent. I mean, what? Again, the best the best friend to a bad passing offensive line blocking is a run game. He only carried the ball eight times. Yeah, and when he does carry it, so. His um, yards per carry when he runs outside of the guards, which is not a very hard thing to do. When he's running outside the guards, his yards per carry is like triple what it is when he runs inside the guards. Right, and that shows you your tackles cannot block pass block for shit. Yeah, but they're pretty the decent on the run block, but our, <laughs> our uh, guards are fucking horrible, and so is yeah. our center it's so weird. but they they choose to run him right up the middle pretty much every play when i mean i know he is a downfield runner but yeah you run He's... him like in between the b and the c gap i mean dude he's solid yeah. but i mean it's just i don't know what the fuck eric b enemy is calling 42 passes I mean, that's just a bit much, dude. And you see your quarterback is dying on the field. The Giants had five sacks coming into this game all year. They had that at halftime. Run the ball, dude. I don't know. I don't get it. Run, Run the ball or, I don't know, maybe don't do shotgun. Like, we never do play action passes. Yeah. Which I don't understand. Um, when we do have play action, Sam Hole, Sam Howe, fucking rolls to his non-dominant side so he's throwing across his body yeah and I I, I mean, like you said there's plenty of time to figure it out so i mean i think you, i mean i don't know if you guys are playoff team again we're not we are not eight and nine nine and eight probably at the end of the year that's i mean that's just i mean right the same record that we've had for the past 10 years yeah so ron rivera is going to be gone Jack Del Rio be gone. Who knows who gets your head coaching job? Um, Fucking bring us Bill Belichick. That surprised me. And a new offensive coordinator as well with this team. The Ravens shellacked the Lions, dude. Really I know. Was not even close. I thought it, that would be the best game of the day. And no. the worst game of the day. Mm -hmm. 
It sucked. It was worse than your game. Your game was at least close. It was low scoring, but it was close. Yeah. Um, the fucking the Lions, I would have won like 250 bucks on that game. So I picked the Ravens to win the first quarter. I picked over 42 points, but I picked the Lions to win. Well, can't win them all. Oh, dude, I've I've won like three bets out of probably like the 15 that I've placed. I think out of I've played like 10, I think, lifetime. I think I've won one bet in my life. <laughs> but uh the Ravens look good. But again, I mean, just the way with the league is this year, they look like the best team in the league. So that probably means they're going to lose this week. Uh, the Lions, right. the, the Lions are in a good spot. They only have to play one one team with a winning record through the end of the year, and that's uh, the Cowboys in Week 17, I think. Oh, so, so they, they're solid. They're good. They'll be fine. Um, they might be the one seed, to be honest. Um, the only team that I will say goes against our theory a little bit is the Chiefs. They lost week one, right? Mm-hmm. They won six in a row. No, they didn't lose league. Did they? They lost to the Lions opening night. Uh, um, for some reason, I vaguely remember the Lions like barely losing that, but I'm tripping. No, they barely won it. Um, remember, because the Chiefs had all those drop passes. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Kadarius Tony. Yeah. Ah! But the Chiefs are the one team in the league that when I watch them, I never think they're going to lose. No matter what, like, it could be first quarter halfway through. They could be down 10 at halftime. I just am like, they'll figure it out. They'll find a way. And I think it's because they have that dude number 15. I mean, Pat Mahomes, he's just fantastic. He's the best quarterback in the league by far. I mean... I, I mean, can't he did begin. put up I can, over 400 yards against the Chargers. I can't begin to describe the the gap between him and everyone else. Like it is like a grand can't like it doesn't matter. And people will be like, "Oh, well, he has Travis Kelsey." Okay, show me one quarterback that's ever won anything without at least one weapon. I mean, name his other weapons on that team, though. You only know Kadarius Tony because he drops passes all the time. Right. I mean, he's got a solid core around him. I mean, he's got a great um, and that defense for the Chiefs. I'm telling you, look out. They're all young. They're all first round picks. They're all. They're, what's they're, what's they, their running back's name? Pacheco? Pacheco. Pacheco. He runs like he runs like he's mad at the ground, dude. He like stomps when he runs. It's weird. I've, I've seen that. But he's like he's a very solid running back to have. Yes. He's very good. I mean, you know when he gets the ball, he will he will give you everything he's got with the Right. I mean the the Chiefs are just that team where you look at them and you go you know, it's not like the 49ers where you go, okay, these guys have a fucking super team. Yeah. These are the guys you look at and go you know, you're just solid everywhere and everybody needs to be fucking terrified of that. Yeah. I, I mean, I know I picked the Jags, but I'm sticking with my pick till they're out, right? But, I mean, the Chiefs are, it's just, you can't really pick against them. Dude, Sam Howell is still in the top 10 for passing yards. Yeah. Well, he throws the ball 53 fucking million times a game. I mean, yeah, he's had he's 200. To complete something. He's had 256 attempts. Yeah, I mean, that in seven weeks? Are you kidding me? Right. You know the math on that, dude? I dude, don't. But do you, do you know how many attempts Kirk Cousins had? 280. Well, yeah, I mean, they... Also, Tua is fucking wild. He only has 229 attempts, yet he's leading for pass yards. He's averaging 9.1 yards per attempt. Well, yeah, he has Tyreek Hill. Still, Jay- that's that's fucking. That crazy. means Sam Howell's throwing the ball thirty-seven times a game. <sighs> so, I saw this happen in at least one college game, maybe an NFL game. Sorry to switch it up, but this has been making me pissed off all weekend, and I've been 
itching to talk about it and why it's not, why it's legal. So on a punt, if you are the person blocking the gunner and your guy weighs a fair catch and you push the gunner. The gunner pushes the blocker. Well, no, no, no. I'm I'm going to get to that. You push the gunner into your player called a fair catch. It's not fair catch interference. Got that. That should not be fair catch interference. If you push the defender into your guy trying to make a fair catch, that's just you being a dick. But just, I mean, you're just being an asshole. Like, why are you doing that? You (laughs) could hurt your own teammate. This dude's flying at 20 miles an hour and you shove him into your standing still teammate. You're just a dick. If you push, if the gunner, then someone's calling fair catch defenseless person calling a fair catch if the gunner pushes the blocker into the punt return guy and the ball hits him it's a fumble and it's not a penalty doesn't make sense if it's one way it should be the other way I agree my only thing is as the blocker you need to be aware of what the fuck is going on around you. And if you're getting pushed into the returner, that is kind of your own goddamn fault. I mean, but at the same time, if he calls a fair catch, honestly, that should just be the end of the play. Well, no, because people draw, I get why it's not the end of the play because you have muff punts and those are exciting. Right. I'm just saying you should not be able to push a blocker into someone calling a fair catch. I mean, so this is where I stand on special team stuff. I don't like kickoffs or punts. I don't like kickoffs because they're just fair catches now. Like people. I mean, yeah, every, I mean, like. Our kicker, Jody Sly, point. has a 100% touchback rate. Yeah. Like, mm. I mean, punts, I get that. Punts can be exciting because they can be blocked and they can be returned. Right. They can like kick blocked, off. dropped, all that stuff. Kick I off. just don't like them because of from a safety standpoint. I, I don't like the thought of this 200-pound dude running full speed down a field with literally one thing in mind, and that is to fuck somebody up. Yeah. I mean, and I just, I don't like it. Yeah, but I mean, there's been so many Hall of Famers that have started on special teams, and that's how they make the cut, right? Like, Shannon Sharp Devin Hester. started on kickoff team. I fucking love Devin Hester. Devin Hester. Primetime Deion Sanders, dude. Great cover corner, but I mean, a lot of what he did was returning punts. I mean, it's exciting to watch punts. It's just, and it doesn't happen nearly as much on punts as it does on kickoffs no. but I just don't like seeing people running down full speed down the field just getting fucked up like I don't like watching people in the NFL get hurt well yeah I mean no one likes people to get hurt right so but I mean it's just I just think there's so like that rule in particular just annoys me because it's and then like I saw I saw This happened two or three times. The ball is coming to a rest. And the coverage team is picking up the return team and trying to throw them on the ball so it's a muff. Like, picking them up and carrying them over to the ball. Well, you know how the NFL is. I mean, they're not going to make a rule change until it's like a fucking abomination about how much it's happening. So... Speaking of rule change, do you think they should ban the tush push? Yes, 100%. What is your reasoning? It's stupid, and it is a play that you call when you have no respect for the game of football. I, okay, ex- expand on your stupid your stupid argument. What is that play based off? Rugby. Rugby. Okay. Rugby is a great sport. These rugby guys know exactly what they're doing. This tush push, first of all, the name's fucking stupid. I like the brotherly shove better. 
and fucking one. Nikola Jokic is the best fucking basketball player on the face of the fucking earth. If you disagree, fuck off. Continue. Um, it's interesting to watch somebody do it with as good of an effective rate as the Eagles do. That's what. Okay, so that is the biggest and best argument I've heard for not banning it. Right, is nobody else can do it. No one else can do it. They do. Nobody which else is can. in its own right respectable. But here's the thing: more and more people are going to start to try it. More defenses are going to start to figure out how to try to counter it. And, and someone's there, yeah, the defense's idea of countering it, we saw it when the Eagles did it against the, ca- the Commanders because Chase Young tried to do it. People are diving at the quarterback, and it's going to get somebody fucking killed. Well, they're diving at the quarterback and linemen. Like, right, I mean, imagine I, being Jason Kelsey with everybody sitting on top of you. Yeah. Imagine like, your arm gets pinned the wrong way and his career is fucking over because of a one-yard play. That or, like, the guards, like, coming in to try to get that push. A defensive end just spearing his knee. I mean, you're going to hurt somebody eventually. Right. And, I mean, defense is not allowed to do that. And They're it's an- not allowed to push somebody. Why is it that the running back can come up behind Jalen Hurts and push him from behind? And it's an ugly play, dude. Like, it's not fun to watch. It's just it's, like... It's not, because every time they're lining up to do it, you might as well just let them get the first down, because there's like... Yeah. It's like, I understand yeah. it's so effective, and nobody else is doing it to the effectiveness that the Eagles are, but also nobody's trying it to the amount that the Eagles are doing it. They are At doing it... Fourth and one, they do it every time. Right. They did it four times against the Commanders. I think they did at least three or four against the Dolphins this week. Right, and it's just like, yeah, you can do it. Cool. It's not exactly breaking the rules. And I don't mind if you do a QB sneak with no push. Right. Because that was, I mean, that that is not just a rugby scrum. You know what I mean? That is like, I mean, it kind of is, but it isn't. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I think, I think it I, needs to. Go. I think they'll they'll end up banning it. I don't think that they'll. Or they just need to make a rule that if you're going to do it, you can't have like a running back in the backfield, or you can only have so many people in a box. Yeah. Like they they have to make it a way where it's actually defendable by the defense. Yeah, because right now it's there's no defense for it at all. Right. I mean, all it is is everybody diving into a hole and hoping you get praying, the right and praying to God you don't get fucking hurt yeah it's just I don't I, I think it's asinine I agree I it'll get banned so um I don't think it will I really don't it will, it will the uh, because you only have one owner for the Eagles that you know wants to wants to keep it so if you put it to a vote of owners, it's going to pass. You know what I mean? Even if you need three quarters. Because people don't want to see their quarterbacks getting hurt. Right. Or owners or whoever. I mean, all all it takes is for some hot-headed defensive lineman that's like, I don't know, Aaron Donald or Miles Garrett to say, I've had enough of this and spear a quarterback in the fucking face. Yeah. And just kill him. Or, you know, like you're used to a quarterback going low. So you have a linebacker jump over top to try to get him and bring him back. And that's the one time they go high and they get fucking knocked out. Right. I mean, so I don't know. Um, We're lucky nothing like that has happened yet. Yeah. And I, it, for it, sure. It, it'll get banned. They won't do it mid season because it's not nothing like that, but they'll, they'll do it at the end of this year. Right. Um, um the picks. we got like four minutes left. Do you want to run through our picks that way we can get off the NFL shit? Yep. Sounds on good. our next episode. Uh let's see. Bills Bucks. Hmm. I'm taking the Bills. I have to, I have to go Bills because they're at home and the Bucks don't look impressive. Uh Jets, Giants, give me the Jets. Jets. Their defense is gonna have a field day. Facts. Jags, Steelers, give me the Jags. Steelers are a sneaky team. They might get the seven seed, but they're not beating my Super Bowl pick. Me no. the Jags. Eagles, Commanders. I hate to say it. Eagles. 
So this is the game that you fucks would win, right? Um, but I'll take the Eagles. Yeah. Rams, Cowboys. Ooh. Cowboys. I think I'm going to go with the Rams, big dog. Okay. Vikings, Packers. Give me the Vikings. Packers, they're at home. In a game like that, that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. at home. They both suck. Falcons, Titans. I'm taking the Falcons. I'll take the Titans. Falcons can't move the ball. Patriots, Dolphins. Give me the Dolphins. They're in Miami. So give me the Dolphins. Saints, Colts. Give me the Colts. My boy Gardner going to come through. Yeah, I'll take the Colts. Texans, Panthers. Give me the Texans. DJ Stroud. He's going to have a big game. He's going to have a big week. Yes, is. Browns, Seahawks. So this is going to be a good game, but I think I'm going to take the Browns. Browns' defense is better. Bengals, 49ers. Mm. Mm. Here's the thing. Give, you, give me the Bengals. Do you take the Bengals off a of bye or the Niners off two losses in a row? I'm taking the Bengals, dog. I'm gonna take the Niners. I think they'll I think they bounce back for real this time. All right. Chiefs, bro. <laughs> Chiefs. Oh God. It's gonna be ugly too, man. Chiefs. Ravens, Cardinals. Ravens. I'll, I'll, I'll take the Ravens. Oh uh, yeah. Bears, Chargers. I really hope the Chargers win this. That's the Sunday night game, dude. That's yeah. what we're with on Sunday night. I mean the Chargers. And then Monday we have the Raiders and the Lions. Look at these shit primetime games. Lions. Lions. God. I uh, only disagreed on four this week, so we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. But we're going to take our commercial break here, and when we come back, we got some non-NFL talk for once. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Welcome back, everybody, to uh, the second half of the Chatterbox podcast, episode eight. Uh, yeah, man, the NBA is back tonight. We got a little preview of uh, of me rooting there in the uh, first half of this episode in the game. It's halftime now, but... Fuck the Nuggets. Shut up. They didn't win me any money. Sorry, dude. Uh... Dude, I, I really hope one day this is gonna sound really <laughs> shitty. <laughs> I really hope one day you get the experience of ring night, dude. That shit was crazy. And like watching the banner go up. She will make a grown man well, cry. Since I'm like a super Bucks fan now. That, nuggets and six. Um a lot of stuff happened in the NBA offseason, man. Dame got traded to uh, Milwaukee, obviously. Boston did get Drew Holiday, and they got Kristaps Porzingis. Um, the Lakers added some pieces. Suns got Bradley Beal. Warriors and we, got we see how the Lakers adding pieces is going. Well, Last I checked, they were down, what, 20? Well, we're, they're down nine at halftime, but you can't hold that against them. They're playing the best team in the association. So, I mean, you know, they're, they're going to lose some games, especially to the Nuggets. Um, uh, the Warriors added Chris Paul, which I don't think is... I think that's more of a see how it works and at the trade deadline, if it's not going good, trade them away for some pieces. That's what I think is going to end up happening. Um, oh, dude, that, we definitely need to talk about the trade deadline coming up for the NFL. Yeah, I think it's... I think it's next week or the week after. Yeah, soon. But uh yeah, um I know I'm not sure if you did a lot of research, but I kind of made some conference finals and then NBA final predictions. So, I did not. It's okay. I yeah. don't even know NBA conferences if I'm being honest. So it's East and West. So that's oh, happy. So Geographical. Keep it yeah. keep it simple, I guess. Just like every other week. Um 
in the East, no surprise, Bucks, Celtics. Um, in the West, Nuggets. And the Kings. So where do they draw the line? Like right down the middle of the United States? I mean, you could just look it up if you really wanted to. But uh, the Kings were a young team last year. They got beat by the Warriors, who had a lot more experience than them. They're a fast-moving team. They could shoot the three well. Um, they got Sabonis, who is like a Jokic, but he's like, if Jokic was like exponentially worse than he actually is, that would be like Sabonis. Dude, this line is fucking weird. Well, yeah, dude, it's it's not perfect. It's just well, like... Yeah, but it goes up through Alabama and then goes across cutting uh tennessee kentucky um fuck is that indiana and then up into he's worried about the line yeah like it goes up and like it's like fucking 80 percent of the united states over here and the fucking 20 for the east well you gotta think a lot of the bigger cities in the eastern half of the u.s I mean, I would, I guess I would have to agree with you, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, seven of the fucking what 14 teams in the West are in California or Texas. Yes. The Nuggets actually fun fact were the first NBA champion from the Western conference that was not from Texas or California since 1979. 79 why is that one the was that the suns no seattle supersonics who are now the oklahoma city thunder oh uh yes yeah, so i got the nuggets kings uh nuggets and six give me the celtics and seven over the bucks they're deeper they have better uh better defense younger and younger stars drew holiday is gonna make it personal with dame uh and then in the finals Nuggets over Celtics, six games. We're going back to back. Uh, barring injury, we're going back to back. I don't think anybody can really stop us. To be you honest, wanna, you want to wager on that? Who, my only question before you say anything is who's going to guard Nikola Jokic? That's all you have to think when you, when you're thinking about the Nuggets. Who's going to guard Nikola Jokic? Who is going to stop him? Five bucks says they don't win the championship. The only one, okay, I'll put five on it. Sure. Well, you want to make it interesting? You want to do five thousand? Nope. Because <laughs> I don't have that kind of money. Well, neither the fuck do I. Well, why would you bet that? Because I need five thousand dollars. Well, you're that confident. Well, we'll see. I'm nuggets and six over Celtics. Jamal Murray in the playoffs is a different animal. Michael Porter Jr. is going to shoot better. Aaron Gordon's a defensive monster. He's a big body in the paint. KCP brings the experience. We got Christian Braun off the bench. Dude, is NBA like entertaining to watch? Dude, the I have legit never sat down I'm and watched an NBA big game dude. before in my life. Unpopular opinion in person, and basketball is way more fun to watch than football. In person. Well, that was fucking stupid. Yeah, you know, I I think I might have to agree because I've never watched an NBA game, but I did go to a Maryland Virginia basketball game. Okay, so as someone who doesn't drink, right? The football, the tailgating, all that—that's that's great, that's fun, whatever, right? But like, I'm not trying to stand outside for four hours before the game doing nothing. Sweating your dick off. Sweating or freezing my ass off. And then watching the game for four hours. And then having to sit in all that traffic going home. Basketball games, either two hours and you're inside the whole time. What's the closest? I guess it would probably be the Wizards. Yeah, Brad and I went and watched the Nuggets and Wizards uh, last year. So we got to see the championship team. You know, I might be just as close to the 76ers as I am the Wizards. Yeah, you are close to that little uh that little pocket there where mm -hmm. it's Philly, not Philly. 
Pennsylvania, New Jersey, right. Delaware, Maryland. I was, I was about to say I can I can get to Delaware and Pennsylvania in like thirty to forty five minutes. Yeah, you're close to Philly then. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's how I see it playing out. I think the Kings make a big step this year. They're good. They're young. They I do don't... not have enough information or knowledge to make any kind of reputable response. Charlie, this whole show was this whole show was not reputable. That's fair. <laughs> um, give me the Lakers in four. Over who? No fucking clue. <laughs> okay. Uh. But the uh, the World Series game one of that is on Friday. They mm-hmm. ran, were down three two, came back won it in seven. Right now, game seven of the NLCS is going on. It's one to one. The third Phillies and Diamondbacks. What a if the Diamondbacks can do that? What a fucking comeback, dude! Down three and zero. They weren't down three zero. I thought they were. No. Were they down two one? You're down two one and then three two. Okay. But either way, to be the sixth seed and to have only won what eighty five games in the regular season. Let's see, how many games did they win in the regular season? Eighty four games. And if they make the World Series, even if they lose, which I'm gonna make my prediction after this. I mean eighty being the sixth seed Beating the Brewers, who won their division, beating the Dodgers, well, that's not impressive because they always choke, and then beating the Phillies, in which game six and seven they had to win in Philly, and that crowd is crazy there. I mean, it's it's impressive, man. And I think uh, if the Rangers play the Diamondbacks, the Rangers will win in six. If the Rangers play the Phillies, the Rangers will win in seven. That's what I think. So I, I got to be honest, I I think. I think the Diamondbacks do it. I think they win tonight. And then I think the, I'm, I'm going to give it to the Rangers in um, five. Five, yeah. They're a better team than the Diamondbacks, but, I mean, so is every other team that's played the Diamondbacks. They've been better than them, so who really knows? Right, and they but, uh, fucking keep managing to win. Yeah, I wish the Yankees could do that. Put their ass and they ruin baseball season for me every year. So <laughs> it's not even fun to watch. Because I know in the end, it's just like the Cowboys do. They just always break my heart. So um yeah, man. So a little bit of baseball, a little bit of basketball. Um now I have an interesting proposition for you, and this is all fully like in play here about the college football playoff. Holy shit, Jamal. Uh let me pull up the rankings real quick. You don't even need them. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a scenario and you tell me what four teams you pick to make the college football playoff. Okay. Okay. Just let me get through the list and then you tell me. Alright. And if you need a reminder I'll read an I'll read a team off. Right. Georgia. Twelve and one. They lose to Alabama in the SEC championship game. Alabama, twelve and one. They beat Georgia in the SEC championship game. Ohio State, eleven and one. They lose to Michigan. Penn State. 11-1. So hold on, hold on, hold on. You have Georgia twelve and one losing to Alabama. Yes. You have Alabama. 12 and 1. Beating Georgia. Beating Georgia. But Georgia or Alabama lost to Texas. Yes. Uh, where are you putting Texas at? You gotta let me finish the teams, brother. <laughs> let me finish. If you want to write them down, let me I know. am. I am writing them down. Ohio State, 11 and 1. They lose to Michigan, but that's their only loss. Penn State. 11 and 1. They lose to Ohio State. That's their only loss. Michigan, 12 and 1. 
Big Ten champion, but they lost to Penn State. Ready? I'm gonna mm-hmm. keep going. Yeah. Florida State, twelve and who, one. Who? Florida State. Florida State. Twelve and one. But they lost to Louisville in the in the ACC championship game. Louisville, twelve and one. They win the ACC championship, but they lost to Pitt, who is now two and four. Hold on, I'm still going. Washington, 12 and 1, loses to Oregon in the Pac 12 title game. Oregon, 12 and 1, beats Washington in the Pac 12 championship game, but Washington has, Washington has already beat them this season. And then Oklahoma, 12 and 1, they lose to Texas in the Big 12 championship game. But they've already beaten Texas, and then Texas twelve and one, Big Twelve champion beat OU. But they've already lost to OU this year. What are your four teams? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna do it this way. Um, get Texas the fuck out of there. Even if they win the Big Twelve championship. Yes. And beat Oklahoma. Yes. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna say get Texas, Texas out. Um. Get Louisville out. They are not going to go twelve and one. Um, hmm. not Penn State. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to take Oregon out. Even if they win the Pac-12? I just don't think Oregon is a better team than Washington. Okay. Uh, So who's that? That leaves me with Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, Mm -hmm. Michigan, Washington, FSU, Washington, and Oklahoma. Um... I I don't see even if Alabama beats Georgia. I don't know if I see Alabama making it in. If Alabama beats Georgia and wins the SEC, they're going. That one I thought would be obvious. So so like is this like these records and these games are exactly what's going to happen yes. and I have to make my prediction off of yes. that. Okay. Okay. Uh, the people I've already taken out, I'm I'm still taking out. Wow. Um so you have FSU. I'm taking FSU out. Losing to Louisville. I mean, they're are they even in the top twenty? They've only lost one game so far, Charlie. They're eighteenth in the country. Yeah, still no on FSU. Um obviously Georgia's I'm gonna take Georgia. Yeah. Even if even if they did lose to Alabama in the SEC championship, they're still going to make it. I mean, Alabama. The SEC guy uh, takes two SEC teams. What? What? What did you say? I said shocker. The SEC guy takes two SEC. Teams. <laughs> um, even even if they, I mean, like even when Alabama lost to the four seed Ohio State, they still crept in. At number four. Um, so you have Ohio State 11 and one. So I, I do think I have to take Alabama. So you have Ohio State at 11 and one losing to Michigan. And you have Michigan 12 and one losing to Penn State. I'm going to take Michigan over Ohio State. You've got Michigan, Georgia, Alabama. And I need one more. 
Let's see. You got Oklahoma with a loss to Texas and Washington with a loss to Oregon. But Ohio State with a loss to Michigan. Mm, actually, give me Ohio State instead of Michigan. What? <sighs> Dude, like, you gave me a very difficult scenario to work with here. Okay, can I tell you what I have? Yeah, go for it. So... I thought it would be easy, basically, because you've got five one-loss Power 5 conference champions. And the way the committee works is they weigh the Power 5 conference championship heavier than anything else, right? So, you got five and you need to pick four teams, right? Mm -hmm. Alabama, Louisville. Oregon, Texas, Michigan. I'm taking everyone but Louisville because obviously Texas, Oregon, Michigan, Alabama are better than Louisville. But then what do you come into is like, okay, how bad did you lose? And, you know, When you look at, I, I think in this scenario, that's who it would be. I think it would be Alabama, Michigan, Texas, Oregon. I think you, you have, you have Texas going in, dude. If they're twelve and one and they win the Big Twelve, they're going to the playoffs. That's how. I mean, that's just how it's going to be. <laughs> Michigan lost to Penn State. Penn State. What's Penn State currently? 10? So, while Charlie's thinking, um, let's see. What's something, what's something I could talk about? Just kind of, I'm kind of focused on the Nuggets right now because they're kind of in a tight game when they shouldn't be. They're only up eight points. Anyways, um, mm. shit's expensive, dude. It's yeah, expensive. fucking tell me about it. Expensive, dude. I get my paycheck and I'm like, damn, bro. It's all gone. I gotta save money. I gotta pay some bills. All right, I I think I've got my four. All right, I'm gonna take Georgia because it's fucking Georgia. I'm gonna take Alabama because you say Georgia. If Alabama beats Georgia, I think they creep in at four. Um, Michigan. Tough loss to Penn State, but Penn State is still a very solidly ranked team. I think they come in at two. And then I got to be honest, I think I'm taking Washington. Really? Um, Over Oregon? Yes. Hmm. So you only have one conference champion in your final four. Now this is this is basing off of the scenario you have given me. Good luck with that, brother. Dude, college football is even more fucking volatile than no, it is not more volatile than NFL. Oh yeah, this is definitely not going to be what happens at the end of the year. I'm oh sure no, will, I'm sure there will be some chaos of some sort, but it will not be this. It will not be. No. No, I'm I'm gonna say probably six out of the top ten teams right now are gonna stay undefeated. I won't even say undefeated. I think maybe we end up with six one-loss teams and maybe one or two undefeated teams. I don't think it's just the way it goes. I mean, like, realistically, I got to be honest, I don't know if I even see Alabama finishing 12-1. and one. 
I definitely think that if they played when they played Georgia, they're going to lose. Yeah, that tough game this game. week. Yeah, yeah LSU yeah. this week. Yeah. Yeah, LSU this week. It's going to be a tough game. I think it's at LSU too. Uh, no, it's at it's in. It's in um, fuck! Why can't I think of it? Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa. I wanted. I was wanting to say Chattanooga, but I knew that wasn't right. That's somebody that they play every year. But which you know, is stupid, which is dumb. It is. It, 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 non-conference games are ridiculous. So we finish out our last four games, LSU, we're at Kentucky, That's a win. Chattanooga, but then we finish the year at Auburn. We always finish the year with Auburn. And that is always, even though Auburn's not ranked, that is rivalry. always a roller coaster of a game. It's a rivalry, dude. It's always and, good. And you can't, you just can't pinpoint what's going to happen i realistically i i don't see alabama making it into the playoffs yeah i just don't i mean their quarterback is getting better throughout the year but he's not he's not a bryce young or a two right. or... but I, i'm just happy to kind of see some new faces in the top 10 yeah, I'm not sure if Texas will finish with one loss and even have a chance to play against Oklahoma because Tw- Quinn Ewers is hurt. Oh, he is? Yeah, he, he has an AC sprain or whatever, joint sprain. I really have to say, I think I'm most pleased to see Florida State up there. Me too. I'm glad they're back. I'm glad. Yeah, that... I mean, they haven't been good since fucking Jameis Winston left. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm glad they're back. Um I'm glad the Pac-12, like, this is the last year before they kind of basically disband. I'm glad they're showing, like, competitiveness before they come into everybody else's conferences and stuff. Like, How do you feel know, about all this um, Caleb Williams stuff about, like, how he should just sit out the rest of the season? Stupid. It's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. You're going to quit on your team? Like, really, dude? I would have to agree with you, but at the same time, I also see a little bit. I mean, I get it. Dude. That's a lot of money that you're risking by playing. But, like, how do you even stay around your team if you're just going to quit? If you're just like, oh, by the way, guys, I'm quitting. Like, Right, I'm thinking about things beyond you guys, so. Yeah, like, how do you even, like, hang out? Like, how do you even go to practice? Like, would you go to practice? Like, I... Or would you just train on your own and get ready for the combine? Right. I mean, and here's another thing. Caleb Williams, dude, I think he is a good quarterback. I think he's a great quarterback. I think his he will translate well. I saw a stat of him versus the top 25 teams in the country. And it was kind of jarring, dude. He doesn't play well against good teams. I mean, that, that's why I think it's so hard to judge players in college because there's just such... Like, when you go to the NFL, yeah, you have standout players, but there is a certain standard that everybody in the NFL lives up to. Because if you don't meet that standard, you don't play. You don't see that field. You don't get signed to a team. Yep. But in college, I mean... The sheer range of calibers of players that you can get in D1 college football is fucking so, insane. This is the stat I heard. Ready? In the four games against top 25 defenses, he's got three touchdowns and six picks in the two and two record. What? Are, uh, how many touchdowns to picks does he have? Norm, like. I mean, I, can look it. it's, I mean, it's ridiculous what it is. Um. And th- and this was written before they played Utah, when he threw more picks. 
So. I don't I don't know his stats against non top twenty five defenses, but I mean I just want to see his season stats. But I mean, I think he's gonna be the number one pick. I think he has to be the number one pick, but I also think So let, let's see. His twenty twenty three stats, he has twenty three touchdowns to four interceptions. Right. I mean that I mean, it's an interesting stat line that you gave me, but I have to be honest. I I think it's more one of those kind of phenomenons. Yeah, like it's just a coincidence. Well, again, also his defense, his defense, USC's is so bad that he's always trying. He has to basically either play perfect or is behind, so he has to. Right, I mean... Looking at his season stats, I mean, 2021, 21 touchdowns, 2022, 42 touchdowns, Um, 2023, he's at 23 touchdowns already, and he has four picks, and the most he's had so far is five picks, and that's in 2022. Yeah. I mean, you. it is almost impossible to argue with somebody that's throwing 42 touchdowns versus five picks. Yeah, I mean... And he won the Heisman for that, so and he deserved it. But I'm just, right. I'm just saying that has to obviously not cause a pause to draft him, but just cause a pause to be like, okay, can he really do that in the NFL? Uh, is he going to do that against NFL defenses? Or I don't know. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see. Right. And and something else to kind of take a look at is if you look at these games that he's losing and not doing as well against better teams, he is taking a lot more pass attempts than in other games. Yeah. And I, I think part of that is, you know, he knows he is playing a team that is going to outscore his defense and he's just trying to win. Yeah, he's pressing. Right. But so, again, again, if you if you have the number one overall pick, your team's probably not that good. Right. I so, mean I mean he's gonna be pressing a lot, at least his rookie year. I'm I'm interested to see how the draft goes this year. It's, it's yeah. gonna be at, at this point I kinda want the commanders to tank because we, we really need to draft well this year. We only got a couple minutes left, but I want to get your thoughts on this. Did you hear about the Michigan sign stealing allegations? Mm-hmm. That uh, the football team like paid a scout to like go visit other college football games and steal signs and stuff. We got Google. That sounds like some hardball shit. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You shouldn't cheat. Whatever. But, like, you're not changing your signs week to week as a D1 program. That's on you. Like, you, like people, people try to gain any competitive advantage they can. They don't need somebody to come sit at your game and watch your sideline call the plays. I mean, there's film, there's angles that you can see the sideline just change your signs and there's no way they can prove this i'm sorry i'm reading the article that the espn wrote you're fine i just that's my thoughts i just and why college football doesn't have mics in their ear like the nfl does like in their helmets still in 2023 makes no sense to me whatsoever i mean here uh, i i like the uh phrase um that uh espn used to honor amongst thieves kind of thing um we we know that these 
programs have a certain level of, I don't want to say cheating, but just kind of a certain level of, uh, let's just say sleaziness. Every team has that. I guess. I just... Right. So, like, I don't know why... And again, other than this proven, I don't think you can prove it. I don't know how you would. Right. I mean, I, I saw the only bit of evidence that they really had is that one of their analysts purchased like 30, t right, like 30 tickets over three years. But that, but that's not a they fucking also lot. Came out, they also came out with news today that none of those tickets were to Big Ten games. Right. Maybe he just likes college football. Right. So like. If he's not going to Big Ten games, who the hell is he scouting? Right. Well, I, right. Well, I mean, I, I think it needs to be looked at as a form. It's like the he lives in a glass house should not cast stones. Like, yeah. if other teams are going to question Michigan and like say they're cheating, you, you better damn hope that there's nothing going on in your organization. Right, and it's not like the Astros in baseball where. There's very clear but, evidence that it's happening. That, and like, you know, like everybody in baseball, if you're on second base, you're trying to look at the catcher's hand to get some sort of signal, right? Right. Like they were using cameras to film people's signs and then steal that. Like, that's different. Right. And I guess if somehow they can prove that this guy was going to bid 10 games or the opponent they were playing the next week and stealing their signs, like, I guess it's the same thing. But I mean... Right, and let's also look at it this way. How many times in these past three years has Michigan gone to the playoffs? Twice. Twice. How many times have they won the championship? Zero. Zero. And they have a month to steal signs from those teams that they're playing in the playoff. So, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just some bullshit allegation. Yeah. I don't anticipate anything happening or coming from it. So no, not at all. But um, uh, it's all the time we got, man. Really? Oh shit! Damn, that kind of flew by fast. One last thing I want to talk about. Yeah. Do you think Bill Belichick gets fired? It depends. If they win, no, actually, because there was a report that came out that Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick came to a contract extension over the summer. And didn't tell anybody. So he oh. just signed an extension over summer. So, no. If you'd asked me that a week ago, I would have said probably. But no. now that I know that, no. He won't no. get fired. I didn't know that. He's, I'm starting they're to... Gonna him, they're going to let him coach until he breaks Don Shula's record for wins. And then that'll be... Then then they'll let him go. Yeah. He'll probably retire. retire. That. Right. Um, he's fucking 70 already. If he's right. not. I really... I've been thinking a lot about who the commanders would take as a head coach recently. And when I heard rumors of him potentially leaving, I was like, Bill Belichick would be a pretty nice fucking head coach. He's destroyed the Patriots already, dude. I mean, dude, I don't really think you can I say he, that he's the reason it's happened. He's the coach and the GM, he signs the players. He cuts the players. He, he runs the team in every aspect. I mean, it's just what happens. I mean, do they they ran a dynasty for almost a yeah. decade? Again, I'm not saying that it's not natural, but it's I'm not also I'm also not saying that he had no part to play in it. Right. No, I'm not saying that, but I think when your head coach is Ron Rivera, well, yeah. the thought of Bill Belichick coming over that that's a good thought. Yeah. I'm, I mean, yeah. I mean, would you take Ron? I mean, Bill Belichick over Mike McCarthy? Well, yeah, I would take a bag of dog shit over Mike McCarthy. If there was one coach I would want to have come coach the Commanders, though, Andy take Reed. a guess as to who it would be. Andy Reid. Well, I would like that, but there's there's a coach I would take over Andy Reid. Sean McVay. No. I don't know. Mike Tomlin. Well, yeah. He, he's always at least winning. Like, the Steelers are doing better than anybody thought they'd be, so. Right. Well, I actually had a script this week. What do you want to name this episode? Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. I really want to name it something to do with nuggets, but no, I have to. I have no idea. I don't know. Brainstorm it. Yeah. All right, dude. I'm going I'm to bed. To like, comment, subscribe if you make it this far, which we all know you won't. But it's mm -hmm. okay. Deuces, everybody. Yeah.